Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 200 and have a look at the thumbnails. That's not going to help you. Maybe read the titles. That's still confusing of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. At some point, we'll work out the episode. I, I don't know. I, look, I was looking at the episodes on, on YouTube recently um, and it's fucked. Like, got, like, seriously, if you're listening to this, look at Spearhead Sundays on YouTube right now. It is a mess. All right. What is this? Okay. It, the, the, first of all, the thumbnails and the titles are never the same. And then, and then the titles don't count chronologically. So, so first I'll do the thumbnails, right? So the thumbnails go 228, 239. So where did, where did the three come from? That's like 11 forwards. 228, 239. And then back down to 225. And then 241. And then 243. And then 243 again. So I don't know what the fuck, all right? So that's the thumbnails, all right? Now let's do the titles, okay? 238, 239, 240. Oh, no, wait. These are right. 241, 242, 243. Okay, so, but the problem is which one of these are right? Is it the thumbnails or is it the titles? Because it can't be the thumbnails, I don't know. Guys, welcome back to the show, all right? Uh, and and I would like to blame us for that, you know? Like, a lot of people are going, oh, it's Keelan's fault. Hey, hey, yes, all right? That's true. <laughs> but a lot of people say, hey, it's Lewis's fault. And I, and can I just say, yeah, absolutely. It's, <laughs> it's both of our faults. He'll fuck it up, and then I'll just keep counting on from him, where he went, and then he'll go, oh, no, wait, I got it wrong. I better adjust that, and then I'll get it wrong. And then it's we're, we're both... We're both bad at our jobs, I would say, is why that's like that. So welcome back to the show. I did miss two episodes, and I would like to say fuck you, all right? It's free, yeah? It's free, all right? Lockdown happened in Melbourne. It ruined everything. I got a little bit sad, and I thought, you know what? I don't want to be funny for an hour. Uh, now I'm now lockdown's over, and I'm like, maybe I'll be funny for an hour, but then I'm going straight back to World of Warcraft. I don't give a fuck, all right? Guys, come see me live, losebeers.com. I've uh, got a bunch of dates coming up. Uh, Ballarat and Shepparton, let's be honest, those are probably getting moved, but buy tickets anyway. Uh, <laughs> Warnable, uh, Adelaide. Uh, here's, some, here's some shows that are almost definitely happening. Uh, uh, Adelaide, Hobart, Launceston, Perth, Gold Coast, Brisbane. Uh, those are probably definitely happening. Lucybiz.com, Newcastle, yeah. Who knows? That you can buy tickets for it. Uh, Sydney, that's fucked. I don't know if, when Zach, when that's going to happen. But the other ones are happening, all right? So, Jesus Christ, it sucks, doesn't it? COVID sucks. Thanks, Gladys. Man, I feel I feel for all, all you guys in Sydney who uh, have to deal with the lockdown. Because you know what? Mel Melbourne, we've had a lot of lockdowns, and we've done it heaps, and we had a big, long 100-day lockdown. But it every time we've done it, even the most recent one, even though it was lockdown number five, dun, 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 um, even though it was the fifth time and it was shit, all of us were like, oh, but it's going to work, you know? Like, we all knew that this sucks, but... You know, then we're going to go down to zero cases and we can do whatever we want and it'll work because our government knows how to lock down properly. You guys in Sydney, you guys have a lockdown that doesn't stop COVID at all, obviously, because the cases are still going up and hitting record highs like every fucking day. But it seems like the only thing that happens is like poor people can't work. You know, people on Bondi are allowed to like lick each other's assholes on the beach, do whatever the fuck they want, and the police will see that and go, you know what, we need more cops in Western Sydney, you know? It's like I see all of these all these rich people on Bondi Beach breaking the rules, but you know what I really don't like? Ethnic cunts. <laughs> you know, that seems to be what the New South Wales Police Force is doing, is like, oh, yeah, these bloody business people shouldn't be breaking the rules, but you know what, you really shouldn't be poor. So let's go and harass those people. Um, I don't know. Like, I like. on one hand, you know, uh, I think, oh, Sydney has locked down for two weeks and they start the biggest protest the country's ever seen. You guys are pussies. On the other hand, I'm like, well, the government is so fucking incompetent, it seems, with their lockdown that they're doing some... First of all, they didn't lock down. So then the cases went up, which is whatever. Okay, they gave it a crack. They're like, oh, we can beat this, all right? So they were wrong, right? 
uh, I thought they were going to be wrong and they were proven, I was proven right, they were proven wrong, okay? But then they're like, oh, all right, well, cases are going crazy, so we have to do a lockdown. But you're allowed to shop. Also, you can exercise in groups of 10. So if you want to have a soccer game, go nuts. Uh, also, you can go to the shops. Gucci and Louis Vuitton, they're going to be open. But don't you browse. You better buy something. No browsing, all right? This is an experience. Like, everything's fucking open except for, like, regular people's jobs. Like, every, it's all this lockdown seems to have done is, like, fuck people's ability to make money. And then you have all these influencers like me chiming in. Right. And, and they're all going, oh, the protesters are so fucking stupid. It's like, yes, okay, they probably shouldn't be protesting, but... Think about the reason why they're protesting. These cunts can't work, all right? All these, like, super privileged influencers who are who are able to make money online, like me, for example. It sucks that my shows have been cancelled. I'm losing a lot of money. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't get to do these shows. I don't get to do my passion. It makes me sad. Uh, I don't get to see you guys. It hurts the economy because the theatres can't open. It fucking sucks. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be fine because I've got Patreon, I've got brand deals, I make money online, I've got YouTube, so I'm going to be sweet, right? No matter what happens, if if you can't leave your house ever again, I'll be all right because I do this for a job. Got paid for that. Oh, that's my wage. I made money. You know, a normal person who does something useful for work, like my parents, you know, my dad's a fucking tradie, they're fucked. Uh, and that's who the lockdown really affects. And then you have all of those types of people who, like, they've got no work. The government has taken away all of the fucking benefits. They've taken away all of the payments. They've gone, oh, we are we are so confident that we that lockdowns uh, that we we are we don't want lockdown to happen so much that we're going to take away all of the payments. That's how confident we are that lockdown will never happen again. And then it happens again. There's no payments for people. There's no way out. There's no fucking vaccines at all. And there's no pathway and the cases aren't going down because the lockdown that they have initiated in Sydney isn't an actual lockdown. You can do pretty much whatever the fuck you want. So the only people that actually get hurt are cunts who have no money and have no ability to work from home. No wonder they're at a protest. They're desperate. I don't agree with the protests and I think the virus is very serious and I believe in lockdowns, but only if you do it right, like, you know, we have done in Melbourne, it's fucking awful and terrible and it sucks, but it works. It doesn't work if you do it half-assed. And uh, I feel for all the people that are in Sydney, man, that's, uh, that sucks, dude. I don't know, I don't know where, where, where the way out of this shit is. And I think that what's annoying about everyone getting so angry at these protesters is like, we shouldn't be angry at the protesters, okay? It's 5,000 cunts, who cares? Yes, it's bad, they probably shouldn't be gathering, it's more contagious, blah, blah, blah. But the reason they are doing that is because the federal government fucked them over and then didn't secure vaccines, so the only option that any state premier has is to lock down. That's the only option we have. And even though Melbourne's got out of it now and Adelaide's out of it and it looks like Brisbane's going to get out of it, Sydney can't beat this thing unless they lock down even more. And even if they do, it's going to take months, which means all the other states are just going to get it again. It's just going to happen again. So it seems like for the next six, eight months, we're just going to be going, every state is just going to be going in and out of lockdowns with no end in sight because the federal government didn't secure vaccines. And now in Sydney, they're going, oh, it's all right. We're going to, lockdowns will end when enough of you are vaccinated. And then everyone goes, great. Love that you've brought that up. Would love to get vaccinated. Do you have any? And they're like, oh, we've got the one that'll kill you. You know, would you like this? It'll kill you. I'm like, hey, didn't you say that this would kill me? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was before we were desperate. So <laughs> what do you reckon? You know, I feel like, like uh, Australia with vaccines is like two, ha two heroin addicts, one needle, you know? Where, where they both know that they shouldn't share the needle. We shouldn't share the needle, but fuck. I would really like what's in there. I would really like to stop feeling like this. Shouldn't share the needle. But, you know, so look, I'll say this. If you're under 50, don't take that shit. AstraZeneca, the Pfizer, whatever. My girl's been Pfizer'd up. 
I can't get it. She was an at-risk person. I'm technically her carer. She's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be fucking into that shit. Like the the government is just going. All right, look, look, look. You you can come out of out of lockdown if you take the thing that all of the doctors are still saying not to take. All right. It's like it feels like fucking blackmail, where it's like, yeah, look, I fucked up. But the only way for you to fix my mistake is for you to risk your life. I'm over 50. I took that shit. Yeah, as per doctor's advice. I don't know. All these politicians who have been like, who've had the Pfizer vaccine going, oh, just take AstraZeneca. What's, what's the issue? I don't know. The issue? Anyway, guys, this is probably why I didn't do the podcast for two weeks. <laughs> Is this, you know, all these people that were complaining, oh, where's the podcast? Is this what you wanted? <laughs> now I'm hot. Just yelled for 11 minutes about the fucking lockdown in a state that I'm not even, a, I don't even live in. <laughs> Guys, I'm just angry that my show got cancelled. But that's, you know, that's another thing. Like, like all these fucking influencers, like, really don't listen to us because we are the, of all the people in the country, other than politicians, we're, influencers are probably the least affected. In, and to be honest, I would say that influencers uh, since the pandemic are all generally doing better. We're, I'm a bit of a weird one because I do live shows, so I'm kind of fucked. But, like, all these people that, like, just make money online, they don't do live events, they're doing better. Like, every single cunt that I've, that I've spoken to, making more money, their audiences are bigger. It just makes sense. More people are watching online stuff. Everyone's stuck in their house and they're not doing live events. They're spending money on merch, this, that. So whenever you're, like, whenever, like, an influencer chimes in to, like, really – like uh, like dunk on people that are that were at a protest, uh, maybe because they were stirred up by the news and then and then put in a desperate situation by the government because they can't work. It's like, hey, Instagram whore who gets paid by tea companies, uh, you don't know what a lockdown does. All it does for you is make you more money. These other cunts, they're desperate. What do you expect them to do? Die in their homes. Oh, fuck. Guys, maybe I should change the subject. My merch drop went great. Speaking of influencers being unaffected by the pandemic, my merch drop went great. Thank you very much. Uh, Loosespears.com, I dropped uh, I dropped uh, records. Uh, the Death Threats Don't Scare Me, my first ever comedy special. Uh, still, to this date, the biggest crowdfunded comedy special in the world. Uh, celebrated its three-year anniversary. And to celebrate that, um, I decided to make some money. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, to celebrate that, it's really, really cool. Uh, we released it on vinyl, on vinyl records. There's only 300 of it ever made and it went fucking nuts. It's only been a few days since that drop and there's only 50 left. So it went absolutely crazy. Thank you so much to everyone who copped the record. Uh, they're all signed. It's probably the most premium thing that I've ever made. Like in terms of like the cost for me to produce it, it's super expensive uh, because I wanted to make it like really nice. We went all out on this. Uh, we used the original design, uh, the, the original illustrations from Matteo Mazzella who does all all of my posters and did the original art for Death Row So Scare Me. We took that and uh, we gave it to Zach Bowen from North Nine Designs. He's a really great graphic designer. He does all of my tour posters as well. Uh, and uh, he's a he's like a real record collector. So I kind of, I've, I've got a few records. My girl's more into it than I am. Uh, so I think they're cool, but I didn't really, I didn't really understand what made like a, what is a good collector's edition record? Cause I didn't just want to be like, oh, it's collector's edition. You can tell by the price, <laughs> you know? Like, you know when there's some collector's edition shit where they're like, collector's edition, $500. Games always do this where it's like, oh, you want the new Battlefield? Get the ultimate super deluxe $500 edition. And you're like, all right, what do I get? And it's like, oh, you get a little bauble on your gun in game. You're like, cool. I, I Maybe I should burn down your headquarters. You know, maybe I should do that. I didn't want to do that. Um, what I wanted to do was, you know, make something really cool. So it's like this beautiful, like fucking gatefold. So it's like, it's actually, it's, it's like four kind of 
pieces that folds out and there's a beautiful record. We made the record red. We got to print on top of the record, like the blue flowers. There's a little engraving on the record itself, you know, in an area that won't fuck with how it sounds. We got it professionally mastered. We took the original, like, uh, super high quality wave, uh, recorded audio from the the special that d- didn't even make it onto the DVD, like the real proper high quality shit. And we sent that off to be remastered specifically for vinyl by a professional guy who just does that as his job. Um, and then we took it to like uh, an independent record production uh, company in New Zealand. So it's kind of being, it's not being made by slaves, unfortunately, you know, that would keep the cost down, but you know me, uh, I care about the people. Uh, and that's why I want lockdown. And, um, and it's great. So buy it, get it. It comes with a booklet, a bunch of behind the scenes uh, photos and comes with stickers as well. And you get the uh, the actual digital download as well for free. So you can be, you'll be able to watch it before it even arrives. So, uh, and we also restocked all of the Death Threats Don't Scare Me merch as well. The hoodies, this and that, everything's there. Go get it, loosebeers.com. Uh, and while you're there, grab some tickets to my, uh, my tour. Um, so yeah, great. So that's out of the way. I've had my fucking rant about... Uh, everything. And now it's time to talk about, uh, Wendy Williams. All right, dude, I can't believe this shit. The day after I'm, I make a video about how insane Wendy Williams is right. The literally the day after this happens on her show. Okay. This is the day after my video of, of me and kill We thought we found all of the, the, the most ridiculous things that have happened on Wendy Williams' show. We found, I mean, we found a compilation of her farting, for fuck's sake. <laughs> All right? If you have a compilation of you farting, hey, one or two farts in, in like a decade, I reckon. You get, you get one fart every 10 years. I've been doing this for 10 years, still haven't farted, you know? Actually, I, I'm, I'm, about, I'm up, up to about year nine right now. When did I start? 2012? Yeah, I'm in nine years. So look, in the next 365 days, I might rip a fart and that's my right. You know, I'm entitled to one fart in the next year or next, next 18 months, you know? So at any moment, I want you guys to be ready. I may fart or I could be saving it up, you know, because that means if I don't fart in the next year and a half, that means in the next two years, I get two farts. That's the rules. Wendy, you know, seems to be a serial farter, which is strange, right? So we found all of the most, all of the times she said fucked up things on the show. We put it in the video. And then the day after this happens, right? So this is on television, right? I didn't watch Lifetime all weekend. I didn't get caught up in any mo- many movies. And I didn't see any sex in the city. Right, so that to me, look, what what is, what she's about to do is really fucked. But that, like those first seven seconds, that's what I think is the most fucked thing, is that she's on like national television, and she's just talking about what she watched on TV that week. It's like she's out for breakfast with another mum, and they both did nothing. Like this is like whenever uh, I do a podcast during lockdown, it's like, oh, so this is what I watched on TV. You know, I decided not to do a podcast instead of subjecting you to this. I was also playing World of Warcraft. By the way, a shout out to Kim Cattrall. (laughs) Her brother was missing and I saw on the news feed this morning that he was found. Great. Shout out to Kim Cattrall. (laughs) I saw on the news that her brother was found recently, all right? So she's immediately, she's lost. She's like, what did I watch on TV? Uh, I watched a a bit of this, I watched a bit of that. I didn't watch any Sex in the City. Speaking of Sex in the City, shout out to Kim Cattrall. Also, speaking of Kim Cattrall, her brother was found recently, I saw on the news. So that's, that's so I'm just going to watch that little bit again. This is important. I didn't see any Sex in the City. By the way, a shout out to Kim Cattrall. (laughs) Her brother was missing, and I saw on the news feed this morning that he was found. Oh, good. That's dead. great. <laughs> yeah, Samantha, or Samantha. Don't, I mean, say it a different way. Hey, shout out to Kim Cattrall. I saw on the news that her brother was found. What's that pause for? Why is the pause there? Hey, shout out to Kim Cattrall. I found that her brother was found. Do you want me to clap? Is that what? 
Is that what she's waiting for? Why does she keep fucking doing this where she says horrible things like they're winning a car? Like, what does she want the audience to do? If I was sitting there, I would have gone, woo! <laughs> That's what I really want in this silence is like a little woo. By the way, a shout out to Kim Cottrell. Her brother was missing and I saw on the news feed this morning that he was found woo! dead. Oh. <laughs> And the audience is horrified. Look at this. Look at this black woman in the, in the orange top. She's like, what the fuck? Why did you? These people are not horrified at the story. They're horrified at the way she told it. <laughs> That's what this black woman's thinking. She's like, why the fuck did she pause like that? Her brother was missing. And I saw on the news feed this morning that he was found dead. Oh, my God. Yeah, Samantha or Samantha from Sex and the City. That's not her fucking name. Don't talk about my brother being found dead in a gutter and then going, oh, you know, Pinga Pete. Pinga Pete's brother. He was found dead in the gutter. (laughs) Say my name, you bitch. Oh, I didn't see. Did, did anybody watch Sex in the City over the weekend? Why are you talking about Sex in the City? Did anyone see? Like, what is she trying to get from the audience? Oh, yeah, I watched Sex in the City. Oh, dude, how good is Samantha? You know the actor who plays her. Her brother's dead. They found him dead. Where was it? They had a lot of movies on. Like, ugh, <laughs> the movies. Ugh. Like, stupid ones that we've all seen so many times. Anyway. All right, don't mean to bring it down, but it's time for Wendy's Pop Tropic Giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? She's talking about TV. Then she goes, oh, this actor's, this woman whose show I don't watch, her brother was found, long pause, dead. Anyway, did anyone else watch Sex in the City? Oh, uh, no, man. Why do they put so many shit movies on? Anyway, her brother's dead. Don't mean to bring you down. Who wants a car? I mean, this, are we, have, has anyone checked to see if, if, if Wendy Williams isn't just like yeah, Joe Biden in blackface? Sex in the City. So, but I didn't see, did, did anybody watch Sex in the City over the weekend? Pointless question. It? Who watched it? They had a lot of movies on. Yeah, a lot like, of movies. Ugh, with the movies. A lot ugh. of movies. A lot of movies. Like, like stupid ones that we've all seen so many times. Anyway, all right. Don't mean to bring you down, but it's time for Wendy's Pop Tropic Giveaway. That's great. I think that's really good. Uh, that's that's man. That's the type of TV show that should be on. That's isn't that just like really indicative of where television is going? It's like. Whoever is, like, forget Wendy Williams, right? Her brain has worms. You can see them falling out of her ears. Who the fuck is running that? And, like, like obviously he doesn't even watch it. The executive that's in charge of that TV show or that network or whatever doesn't even watch it. He's like, yeah, Wendy Williams, she's on TV. Who cares? Like, that's sweet. People, people see that and go, man, I wish I was on TV. I don't. Anyway, shout out to Kim Cattrall. I heard her brother was found. Dead. <laughs> so fucked. Um, all right. Anyway, <clears throat> speaking of being found dead, my career's over, guys. It's over. The BTS fangirls found me. All right. Devlin, the TikTok guy of the Luke and Lewis show, he posts a clip. Uh, the, I've already put up a video about it of me framing Frenchie, all right? That'll be on my main channel. Should be by now, unless we've made an error, which we may have between now and then, right? It's possible. I mean, look at the fucking episode numbers of this show. What episode do you think we're at? I I wouldn't be surprised if 100 episodes ago we got it 10 numbers out and then... Can someone please go back? A fan, all right? I'm not paying Keelan to do this. Fuck that. Someone go back and count manually. Don't look at the titles. Count them. I can, I can tell you for sure. Right. It is episode 235. But what does it say? 235, what does it say? Oh, the last one said 234, so... Oh, okay. I'm going off that. Well, that's not, obviously, that's not a, an accurate way to measure things because that's our problem. We just look at the previous episode and we continue counting. <laughs> What's the audio doing? Oh, so the audio 
This is my suspicion. My suspicion is Keelan fucks up the title or I fuck up the title and then one of us fixes it days later. So the thumbnails are fucked. Neither of us can be bothered to fix the thumbnails, so they're just fucked. But the, the YouTube titles seem to have been corrected in post, right? But if you go and you look at Spotify... Whoops, that's Don't Fuck With Cursor. Sorry, guys, that's in my recent plate. I'm such a sick cunt. I'm so fucking cool. 237 is correct. Right. And 238, the actual title says 242 so we went a hundred episodes back in time and then the episode after that is episode 243 so i actually don't know what episode we're up to this is yeah this is what this is what i mean we don't know what episode we're up to you know what happened with our podcast it's like if everyone in the world's watch broke at the same time we'd have to just fucking make up what time it was and then go oh that feels right and then just go from there. Uh, I've counted. Yeah. This is episode 243. This is 243. How did you count that yeah. fast? Oh, just, so episode 237, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Right. 43. Guys, so 244. this is, I don't trust him. Go back. I want, I want you to go back and count by hand with a fucking, what's that thing with the beads? What's that called? <laughs> what are they called? One of those things. Get one of them. You know how we used to do math when cunts were so dumb they couldn't even picture numbers in their minds? How weird is that? That people used to have to carry around a thing with beads that represented numbers because there were some people on earth that were so fucking stupid that you'd be like, can I get three? And they'd be like, what? You know, know, three of those. What the fuck are you saying? Show me with your fingers. Well, I've only got two fingers. I lost the others in the war. Which war? Ah, oh, fuck. Well, if no one's... Well, no one wrote it down. I forgot the name of it. Ah, oh, shit. How many did you want again? Three. What the fuck is that? Hang on, I'll get my abacus. Abacus! Is that what it is? Yes. Dude, nailed it. Nailed it. Guys, look. I'm coming out of lockdown, so I'm rusty. And I also haven't done anything. But you know what I have done? I've shaved my nuts. And and I've done that with the power of manscaped.com. What's my code? <laughs> Spears. Use code Spears for 20% off and free shipping your razor. Anything you like, manscaped.com. Use code Spears. And the lawnmower just got an upgrade, right? I was previously promoting the lawnmower 3.0. If you bought that in the last two weeks, sucked in, all right? Lawnmower 4.0. It's upgraded. And dude, honestly, I'm going to say this honestly, and I might get in trouble for this. When they announced the lawnmower 4.0, I was like, yeah, it looks different. And that's, I bet that's it. I bet it looks different. They go, oh, it's super different. I was like, bullshit. I got it. I looked at it, I'm like, this, I, I looked at the blades, I'm like, this looks exactly the same, how can it be different? It just looks like Darth Vader. I bet they've just upgraded the shell, and it doesn't work any better. I use that shit, it's way better. Keelan, you used it, it's better? Way better. Way better than the Lawnmower 3.0. And I thought the 3.0 was great. The 4.0 shits on it. Really, really good stuff. Get just, get, dude, you should see my balls, bro. How are you nuts? Soft. 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 They were hard before? See a doctor. Lawnmower 4.0, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping, right? Support the show so that I can continue to sporadically release it. <laughs> um, hey, my stand-up clips have been going great on, on Instagram Reels and TikTok. Uh, we, we were posting them daily 
Uh, but then we had to stop because we just ran out of clips that were under 30 seconds. For some reason, I can only post 30 second reels. Instagram are apparently releasing 60 second reels globally for everyone in a few days. So hopefully when that happens, I'll be back to posting daily. And uh, I would recommend you get your tickets before then, because as soon as I start posting clips, every time it happens, I just sell tickets like crazy every fucking day. So uh, get yours, lewspears.com. All right. Uh, what else do I want to talk about here? I have... Uh, Oh, I love the Olympics. The Australian coach celebrating. I love that. Only Americans could get angry at how someone else is celebrating them losing. Like, I I really like this year's Olympics because I, I follow a lot of American people and I am just loving... Every you you probably I bet this happens. This is the first time I've noticed this because it's probably the first Olympics where I've like actually looked at what people are saying about the Olympics on Twitter. I don't think I was using Twitter like four years ago or five years ago. When was the last one? Five years ago. Yeah, I don't think I was really using it. This is the first Olympics where I've paid attention to like what people are saying about it. And I I imagine this would happen every year where it's just Americans realizing that they're actually not the best at most things, you know? Like, they're going, oh, what the fuck? How are other countries beating us at anything? Like, every time an American team loses any sport, they're like, wait, what? You know? Like swimming. The Australian swimmer beat the Americans. Of course she did. We we are a fucking island. Like, like everyone here swims really well. You know? In America, uh, I mean, doesn't a huge demographic of your country not know how to swim? Like, that's your country, bro. So I'm loving that people are getting angry at how the Australian coach celebrated when uh, his person won. Because she wasn't really supposed to win either. Like, wasn't she, like, not that good? She's only 20, so this is her first Olympics. She's only 20, yeah. So she she shouldn't, on paper, she shouldn't have won that because it was her first Olympics. And she's up against, like, seasoned Americans. And she's, yeah, against, I think, I could be wrong. I think yeah. It was against Becky, who's, like, yes, yeah. Awesome. That's great. And then the, the, so the Australian coach is like celebrating and crying and going, fuck yeah, as he should, you know, and I love all, all these people like now angry about it, saying that the way he celebrated was disrespectful. It's like, hey, if you can't hump the banister and terrify a Japanese woman in the process, you're not celebrating hard enough. That's what I think. Every time I, you know what? Every time I, like, this is what I'm going to do. When my records sell out, I'm not going to celebrate until I'm next to a Japanese woman and I'm going to make her piss herself. That's how you really celebrate is standing next to a small Japanese woman who is security for some reason, right? I feel like that was a real misstep on Japan's account where they were like, Japan's culture is so much like about respect and they're like, well, why would anyone break the rules? We don't need big security guards. There's a reason why in Australia, every security guard looks like uh, like the villain's henchman, you know? There's a reason why we need Islanders outside every fucking club, like six foot eight, 300 kilo Islanders as security in Australia. Because if we had a little Japanese woman standing outside the front of cloud nine, there would be no rules in that club. Japan were like, oh, well, people just follow the rules here. I'm sure that sure it'll be the same. No, you get an Australian guy in there, you get someone someone on his team to win, he's going to hump the banister and give every Japanese female security guard a panic attack, and that's Australian culture. Rules? Fuck that. I'm humping. My favorite one was like all of these uh, all these Americans that were like so clearly shitty that America lost. So they're taking that out on the coach going, oh, he's trying to make it about her, about him. He's trying to make her win about him. It's like, cunt, he didn't even know he was being filmed. Like, I'm pretty sure that if he knew he was being filmed, he wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. Rip my mask off, pump my fist in the air, terrify a Japanese security guard, hump the banister. Maybe I would. Maybe that would be good. You know what? He definitely knew he was being filmed. He was trying to make it about him. That's why you become a coach. Everyone knows that. Man, why do you want to be a coach? Well, so that when my athlete wins, I can ruin it for her and make it about me. That's my dream. That's how That's how I, you know what? That's how I have become such a, that's how I've got such a strong bond for Keelan, with Keelan, right? Is me and Keelan, we've worked together for so many years. And the reason why we work 
together so well is that whenever he achieves something, I make it about me and I ruin it for him. You know, that's, that's, that's why we work so well together is that, you know, he, sometimes he'll win a, he'll, he'll be playing like a video game. He'll win. And I will just take all my clothes off and start yelling at Japanese women. And that's why we work so well together. You fucking stupid cunts. He doesn't know he's being filmed. It's just, I don't know if you've noticed, but when a, when a, when a swimmer wins, it's the worst because they can't do anything. They're in the fucking pool. They all do the same thing. They're like, yes, oh, I'm drowning. <laughs> yes, oh, well, fuck them. Yes, I'm sinking. You know, they can't, it's not an exciting celebration. When a runner wins, they're exhausted, they're crying, they're like hitting the ground, they're going, oh, thank you, God, whatever they're doing, they're running around. When a weightlifter wins, he's like, yes, I'm fucking strong. I did that shit. Sometimes they faint. When a swimmer wins, oh, they splash a little bit and then they go, ooh, ooh. it's boring. You know, you can't even see their face. They've got goggles on, their, their hair's covered. Also, I don't know if Australia has this, but in Canada, if you're, if like you're a coach and your athlete wins, you get like 10 grand. Yeah, like the dude... $10,000 per gold medal. Yeah, like the if you're a coach, the it's also your win. Like coaches do so much work with the athletes. It's more the athletes win, obviously, but the coach, they wouldn't get there without the coach and the coach wouldn't be there without the athlete, it's a team. Like, even if even though it's an individual sport, it's a team thing. That's like, you know, like my shit. Like, yeah, I'm the face of it all, but there's so many people behind me helping me do what I do. It's a fucking team thing. So when, when I achieve something or when my video goes well, it's not really, it's not just me. It's, it's also the the editors so and and the team that's behind me and that's why when my video goes well i say it had nothing to do with you keelan and i find the nearest asian woman and i shake her and i go yeah i did that and she starts crying and it's it's filmed and it's on the news and i go ah and she goes ah you know that's uh and and that's why that's the key to my success is that whenever i achieve something i run up to the nearest asian woman and i make her piss their pants Speaking of BTS, <laughs> I got in trouble by the BTS army. They came for me, right? The the BTS army, the incel teen girl fan base, who I who I love. I really love that they're really really trying to 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 make uh, racism against white dudes like a thing. You know, I look. There's a lot of people that go, oh, you can't be racist against white people. And a lot of people take uh, umbrance with that. But uh, it's, look, it's kind of true. You know what I mean? Like I, I had, a, I had a, literally tens of thousands of, uh, of girls try their hardest to be racist against me. And I didn't feel anything. I felt nothing. I didn't feel victimized. I felt nothing. I feel like... If you had tens of thousands of people saying really racist things about you and, and, and you were not a white dude, it might get to you a little bit. Maybe I have very high self-esteem, but, you know, they tried their hardest. Maybe they weren't very good at it, you know? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe they should, maybe they should go back in time and get a few tips, you know? Go back in time, head to Berlin, figure it out. Um... I got cancelled by uh, the BTS Army, which is great. I love that. Uh, we we talked about uh, some BTS stands uh, on the Luke and Lewis show, and then the TikTok guy Devlin he uploads it, and then he naively tags it with everything BTS. So the clip that's supposed to be for like comedy fans gets delivered straight into the lair of the enemy, straight to BTS people. It gets like twenty thousand views, no likes. 50,000 comments, all death threats. It's great. I love it. Really, really good stuff. Um, and I was going somewhere with this and now I'm lost. Fuck, where was I going? Oh, yeah, that's right. So the one thing that I didn't really address in the video that's already out, um, but I wanted to talk about here is is a lot, a, a lot of the girls were saying, oh, you think bullying is okay? It's like, bitch, in the clip, I say bullying's wrong. And I say, you know when you have the thought to bully and then you go, oh, no, that's wrong. Like, isn't that how bad things stop happening is people go, ah, oh, I shouldn't do that. You know, like that's what it is, right? Um, so I say bullying's wrong in the clip, uh, but also a, a big criticism that uh, that the girls were saying were, oh, so when girls like BTS 
and they do things like hold a sign in a shopping center, that's crazy. But when football or soccer hooligans destroy a stadium and a town and beat up people because their team lost, that's fine. And I just wanted to say, I wanted to make really clear that when when guys do something like that, when men act wild and destroy a town because their team lose a soccer game, that's normal. But when women like something, that's crazy. And I just wanted to make that really clear is that when men do something, it's normal. But when women like something, they're crazy. Okay. And I'm not gaslighting you. You don't even know what gaslighting is. Okay. You have no idea what gaslighting is and you're acting crazy. You don't even understand how to light gas, okay? You're acting crazy right now. And I it's I'm this is very serious what I'm saying. When girls like a thing, they are crazy. And it's not gaslighting what I'm doing here. If you're a, a female listener, you listen to my show and you like my comedy, that's fine. I appreciate it. But liking something when women do it, it's crazy, but when men do it, it's normal. And I'm sure the BTS army will understand that that's <laughs> guys I'm being facetious all right it's very it's you know what it's very normal for you to make a handmade sign and do laps of a shopping center it's super normal <laughs> um nah chicks are great chicks rock dude chicks are sick all right should we do some emails here um <clears throat> Uh, lockdown is over. Oh, for fuck's sake. Lockdown is over, so, uh, I'm so, I'm so on the edge. This is one of those episodes where I'm like, I don't really want to be here, but I'm trying my best for you guys. I hope you, un- I hope you appreciate that. Um, loosebeers.com, buy tickets. I just want to do my shows, man. I really, I have, I, uh, really hope I get to do them. It does look like I will get to do most of them. It seems like I'll probably, I might have to reschedule these regional shows in Victoria but it looks like all of the other ones other than the New South Wales ones are going to go ahead. But, you know, it is also that thing that I was talking about of like, you know, as long as Sydney has it at any moment, a lockdown could happen anywhere else. So who knows? I'm just glad that uh, the the merch drop went well so I can uh, uh, eat food. Um, All right. I got this email about open relationships after I talked about – uh, I talked about it on a previous podcast and I, this guy chimed in. I thought it was uh, uh, an interesting addition to the discussion. I, from memory, a guy asked about uh, whether he should say yes to an open relationship and he wasn't really all for it, but his girl was. I can't really remember. Guys, look, listen to the episode, figure it out. Um, in the latest Spearhead Sundays, um, two four three in my app. I love that he's gone. Well, it said two four three, but it, but let's be honest, it could have been any of the episodes. I mean, two episodes before two four three, apparently it was one four two. So could be any episode, right? Uh, you kept brushing the idea that exclusivity is what gives things value. This is particularly true in the case of relationships, but it also applies to physical goods like women. Uh, he didn't write that. That's very sexist. Uh, and to a a large degree, creative talent. I'm sure we could sit down and figure out some exceptions to this idea, but I will say it is axiomatically, all right, cunt, do you ever use that in a sentence? Axiomatically, what does that mean? Dude, I read, I don't even know what that means. My internet's not working. I'm snapping, I'm going to lose it. Um, I guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. What does it mean? Axiomatically. Well, uh, I guess we'll never know. A X I O matically. Axio, you fucking cunt. Why would you put that in your email? Huh? You don't use this word. Do you seriously use this word or are you trying to sound like you know what it means? What does it mean? In a way that is obviously true. Okay. And therefore it does not need to be proved. In a way that is obviously true, in a and in a way that doesn't need to be proved. Okay, so I would say that it's it that that using the word axiomatically is so fucking unnecessary and annoying and obnoxious and that truth, and and I can prove that axiomatically, all right? Just say obviously. 
But I will say that it is obviously <laughs> in the case of romantic partnerships. Now I hate the guy. I was reading. I, was, I read this email before, and I was, oh, that's a really good point. And now I'm not. I'm not even got up to the point because I got stuck on axiomatically, and now I want to delete the guy's email. Um, I will say that it is axiomatically in the case of romance. Shah, you fuck off, bro. I'm not even read that. If gold were extremely common, we probably wouldn't make jewelry about it. And that's and and the reason why I agree with this guy is because in a way, women and property have some similarity. Um, in a relationship, that's a joke, obviously. They're not worth as much as gold. In a relationship, <laughs> your currencies are time, attention, intimacy, and shared experience. The second you open up a relationship, all of these are diluted and the value of each of them drop. You lead to an inherently unstable situation as in the real world, one partner will end up diluting their share uh, more, causing tension, resentment, and eventually conflict. Yeah, that's, look, this sentence bangs. In a relationship, your currencies are time, attention, intimacy, and shared experience. And what this guy's saying is when you open that up and you start, you know, doing things with other people, each relationship kind of devalues. Unless, I guess, maybe if you live together. But even then, like, it dilutes everything. If more people understood this, I bet it would save a lot of emotional turmoil overall. Yeah, I th that's kind of... I guess that's that's my thoughts is like, I bet an open relationship would work for a month and then it would just like fall apart because you just wouldn't be spending enough time and shared experience with a significant other. Um, all right, then I have this email, right? This one's, a, this one's a doozy. How to cope with being a cheater. I mean, you've... I don't have much experience with this, but I will try my best. Hey, Lewis. I recently had a very emotional end to a relationship with a girl that I very much love. Oh, no. The breakup happened about two months ago. It ended because I flirted with a girl over Snapchat. No nudes. Uh, I flirted with a girl over Snapchat, but did not send nudes. The girl uh, uh, is who my ex played football with, which I did not know. The flirting happened under an hour's period, only texting about twice. So naturally my girl found out about it and the relationship ended. Ah, so you guys had a bit of a back and forth. You didn't like physically cheat on her, but you flirted with someone else. And I, I, I assume she realized and was like, oh, fuck, this is the boyfriend of my teammate. I'm telling. <clears throat> I love this girl with all my heart and the only reason for doing what I did it was that I let my dick talk and I lost a bit of self-control. Yeah, you had a horny moment. Uh, I have uh, indescribable remorse. That's a good word. Uh, well, you should have said my, my remorse is axiomatical. Uh, even before, no, nah, then I would have deleted your email. I wouldn't have read it. Uh, even before my girlfriend found out, I had this same remorse. Yeah, you made a horny decision. You were like, fuck, even before you got caught. I can't find anything online about how hard it is dealing with the remorse of being a cheater. I would love to hear your thoughts on something like this and how I might cope with the situation. I mean, I have not been, uh, I've been cheated on uh, in previous relationships. I have not been the cheater. Uh, so I don't, I don't have any firsthand experience, uh, but my thoughts would be, uh, I guess consequence would probably help. You know, like, you know, you know, if you, if you fuck up real bad, uh, I think you just have to accept the consequence. Like, uh, what have I done? Like, I, I, like, I don't know. It's a terrible thing, a uh, terrible uh, example. But when I was younger, like when I was a teen, I stole money from my mom and I felt terrible about it. And I felt really bad it was my mom did a lot of cash in hand stuff. And I found out where she kept her cash and I, took a bunch of it and I spent it and I felt awful and I felt really, really bad. Uh, and because it was just some secret stash spot, she didn't find out for, for like months and I felt terrible about it because it was like hundreds of dollars, which, you know, especially for my family, it was a lot of money, right? And I felt awful about it. And the only thing that made me feel better was getting caught and then having the terrible conversation and like, oh, fuck, and getting in trouble and having the consequences and then moving past it, like – Having the consequence when you fuck up and you know you fucked up and and it was only you, you know, it wasn't like circumstance, like, you know, COVID's bad, but it's not my fault. So that makes it hard to deal with. But when that when I did that and then I got caught and I got in trouble, that helped me get over it because there wasn't this like guilt around because I did the bad thing. 
I paid the price. Oh, fuck. Can you edit that out? <laughs> I just said his name. Sorry. I would imagine, Sam, uh, that what will help you move on from being the cheater is accepting the consequence and losing the relationship. I mean, that sucks. But I don't know what else to tell you. You got to fucking, you got to, you got to take it. You fucked up. You know you fucked up. You decided to fuck up and you feel bad for it. And now you got to deal with the consequences. Uh, I I would I mean look there's there's therapy that you can go to uh I would imagine that a ther uh, this, this you know what this is probably like uh it's you know what it's an interesting thing because I bet there aren't resources because you're the bad guy right so everyone will be like yeah you fucked up so fuck you you're the bad guy get out of here but you know even people who do fuck up I guess need someone to talk to if they do mess up or they need some way to get around their feelings so hopefully they don't do it again you know. Uh, I feel like, uh, it, it is a bit of a problem in our world where when someone does the undeniably wrong thing, people go, fuck them. They don't need any help. And then it turns into a cycle. You see that with like violent offenders, people go to prison and they get rehabilitated. Uh, and then they just end up in some cycle. Uh, so look, man, I would suggest if you feel real fucked up about it, uh, therapy, I don't know if you're Australian, but if you're an Australian, if you are an Australian, uh, you can get free therapy sessions. If you go to your GP and you go, oh, I'm sad, I need to talk to someone, he'll prescribe you therapy and it's free. Um, if I imagine there's similar programs like that in the UK, if you're from the UK and uh, if you're if you're American, uh, sucked in, I guess. <laughs> I guess you're fucked. Uh, I don't know, man. Talk about it with your friends. Talk about it with your mum if you have a good relationship with your mum. That's that's helped as well. When I've had problems, I've just even as an adult, I've just talked about it with mummy. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I would honestly, dude. I feel like you got to take the consequences, and uh, if you in your own self go, yeah, I fucked up. I guess this is what I, you know, this is what I get. Some, you know, when you really mess up, and you're like, yeah, if you. If you stop, sometimes when you fuck up and you'll be like, well, this isn't fair. Sometimes you need to go, nah, this actually is quite fair. I earned this. Uh, and that can help you move past it. If you make a terrible mistake or if you do something bad and you know it's bad, sometimes you only feel bad if you get no, no consequences. And then the minute those consequences happen and you move through them, it's uncomfortable, but you get through them. You're like, ah, good. I can move on from that. I fucking did a wrong thing and I paid the price and now I'm sweet. So maybe you just got to do that, dude. Uh, so good luck. Uh, I'm going to end it there. If you have any life advice questions, you have any good stories, send them through the podcast at lewspears.com, my email, uh, and I'll uh, do my best to answer them on the show for you. Don't use axiomatically uh, would be my advice. Podcast at lewspears.com. Uh, I can't wait to do these shows. They're coming up in the next couple of weeks, dude. It's the end of uh, oh, it's August now. So we're there this month. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be in Adelaide in two weeks. Come see me. Uh, Adelaide on the 20th of August. Uh, I've also got uh, uh, Ballarat, Shepparton, Warnable uh, in August as well. I got Hobart in September, Launceston. Then I got Perth, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Newcastle. Who knows if that'll happen? Uh, but the other ones will. So get your tickets, lewspears.com. They are selling fast now, especially all everyone's out of lockdown other than Sydney sucked in. Uh, and uh, yeah, my thoughts are, look, to all, I, I'm making fun of you guys, but my thoughts go out to you guys, Sydney, because it's tough. I know how it is. Uh, I've got more experience than uh, than the rest of the country, you know, as being, being uh, from Melbourne. I, I know how much it sucks. So uh, reach out to your friends. Uh, reach out to the services that are available and look at government grants. There's always lots of uh, programs and stuff and they're really, really hard to access uh, and you've got to be proactive. Look for government grants. If you run a business, uh, un you know, unfortunately, if you run a business, there's a lot of money out there. Uh, if you are just an individual, you're kind of fucked, but just look uh, and you'll find some shit. I know if you get tested in Victoria, you can apply for a payment if you lose work. You know, so hopefully there's something like that in Sydney. All right. That's my advice to you. And buy my record, loosespears.com. All right. Thank you very much. I'll be back next Sunday and hopefully it'll be a little, be a little bit less rusty. All right. See you later. Have a shit one. I wonder what episode this is. Bye. Bye. <laughs>